Welcome to Pierce Podcast. I'm Mike. And this is Rolando, and we're here for another Monday mini sode. Yeah, Monday minis. This is where we get a chance to uh, kind of talk about one quick topic for a shorter amount of time. So you're obviously watching on YouTube right now because these are YouTube exclusive podcasts or videos that we do. But we also have a podcast that we release every Wednesday, uh, anywhere you can get a podcast, iTunes, all those places. And those are longer form content. So over an hour where we're talking a lot of reselling news, bolos, things you should be buying, hustles, um, our own experiences, some cool stories. So if you're interested in that kind of reselling content um, and not just a quick thing, go on over, make sure you're following us, subscribe wherever you listen to you, uh, your podcasts. It's good stuff. You could also watch us on YouTube. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about something that you know is really important for a lot of us, and that is when you should call eBay. So if you're an eBay seller there and you've done it for any length of time, you've had issues come up where you've had to call the customer service line. You've had to call and make a complaint, whether it's I need something removed off my account. I need something changed. This customer has done this. Something has gone wrong. And we're going to talk about the times you should call versus when you shouldn't call and kind of how to handle those conversations uh, so that you're getting the best reputation you can with eBay and your store stays in the best possible um, position to be able to be profitable. No, agreed, agreed. And and here's the thing: when you call eBay, it shouldn't be something that you automatically do. Like they shouldn't be on speed dial, right? It shouldn't be the first thing. Like something happens, somebody messages you something you don't like. eBay glitches, you don't like it. Like there 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 needs to be a reason why you call. So it has to be the last resort, right? eBay very much wants you to take care of everything with the buyer. So. Let's say, you know, you get a negative feedback before calling eBay, you should communicate and do that request revision with eBay and, uh, via eBay and say, hey, by the way, I'm sorry you weren't happy with your item. I'm sorry it didn't work. Please know, you know, I sell on eBay to help support my family. If you could you know, revise it to positive, that would be great. And I've done that multiple times and people have fixed it. Right. Uh, sometimes eBay is glitching. Right. The shipping isn't working right. Or, you know, I, you're doing keyword searches. We just uh, talked about this in an update episode or maybe we're going to talk about it on the future one whenever this drops. Uh, and eBay can't do anything about it. So don't waste your time. And you've mentioned before, it's very possible that eBay keeps track of phone calls. Right. Yeah. Who calls and when they call. Yeah. So I uh, kind of going along that idea of, of calling eBay as a last resort. Now, there's one aspect of that of you need to learn to advocate for yourself. Um, if you're a person who doesn't, there's two different types of people. There's the people who they're, I want to speak to the manager right away. And there's the people who they can be walked all over and they're never going to ask to speak to a manager or ask to have something taken care of. They just accept, well, I guess this is the way things are. And the best place is to be somewhere in the middle there. And so you don't want to be first result where you're calling eBay. Cause I worked at a call center. Um, I had worked my way up all the way up to like manager position. And at the call center that I worked at there, um, it was for direct TV. We had tiers of basically customer service people. And the very first tier, we called them tier one, two, and three uh, dispatchers or, or the call people. They, each one of them could handle various things and it could escalate all the way up into the tier three. We, we know what that's like with that tier three section of you know, if you're about to cancel something, you're, you got AT&T, you're about to cancel your service I do before, cell phones all the time. Exactly. Before you cancel, they're like, all right, hold on before you go. And then you talk to that last person who's like offering you the world, right? We'll give you two months free. We'll offer you this. We'll give you a free phone. And they start to offer you those things. There's, we had special group of people who were available to do those things for you. Um, and they were more qualified. They knew more of the ins and outs. And they were the people we trusted the most in the company to make those decisions. Now, if I know from my experience working at a company like that, that when a customer called in, we would keep notes and it wasn't like intentional, like we're keeping notes because we're trying to keep notes on this customer, but we want to have notes on the account. Hey, the technician arrived late at this person's house. We had to reschedule them twice already. And that's good information to have because then if it's if a technician says, hey, I can't make it out to this install for this house specifically, I'm talking about, you know, because I did for DirecTV and we see that this customer has already been rescheduled three times. We're like, I don't care what you have to do. You're getting to this customer's house, right? Like we, so those notes would help us as, as the call center. So eBay's got to have a similar type of note system. And if you've called in for every single little thing that doesn't matter, then they're going to be like, okay, here comes the Karen, right? Here comes the person who just says, they're going to roll their eyes when they see your account come up and someone's going to say, well, somebody else take this phone call, please. Versus you call in when it's important and 
you're going to be much better off. It, it's it's You don't want it to be your first resort, but you also don't want to avoid it completely. There's nothing wrong with calling and asking to have something taken care of. And one of the most important things you can do to make sure that, that your phone call is received well is have a store that's in good standing, right? Where you mm-hmm. you offer all of the things. Maybe you're a top rated seller because you've been selling for a long time. Uh, you've got a low defect, defect rate. Uh, you ship things out on time. You've resolved things in the past with customers. You're going to be at that point because you are an eBay's customer. You're a high valued customer. If you, if you've got a store that sold a lot of things and you've got a low defect rate, they want to keep you happy, and so they're going to be more willing to do things to help you out, remove that negative feedback. Um, and so that's a great point because if you are somebody that's always having buyer issues and you have low feedback and you have transaction defects, like. I'm not sure eBay is going to want to help you out. No, I mean, they're not going to want to in the sense of it's it's not important to them. Now, again, if you are a multi-million dollar, a six-figure seller on eBay, they're still going to bend over backwards in order to mm-hmm. make the world happen for you to be happy because they don't want to lose you as a seller on their, on their platform. Uh, but again, you want to call. And when you can have all of your ducks in a row, when you call and say, these are the things, that was what Orlando said with, try to resolve it with the buyer first. If you have already... Hey, I've messaged the buyer. I offered a return. I offered a refund. I was polite and kind. The customer cursed me out or said this thing, and I responded, you know, politely. You're much more likely to have them resolve those issues. All right. So, how are you able to get to that place where you call? Well, you first should try a few different avenues, right? The the first I would say is definitely go to the eBay seller page, which is interesting that it's not on Seller Hub. Don't you find that interesting? Like it, yeah. I, I always have to Google eBay seller help to get to it. I should be able to just go on the seller hub and just click And Maybe it's there. Maybe I haven't seen it, but if you go to eBay seller help, you're able to go on there. And if you need help with like a return, removing a defect, uh, whatever it is, reporting a buyer, you can do that all. It's all automated there. And then if the situation isn't resolved, then you can message eBay for business on Facebook. And I've heard people recently saying it's not as effective as it used to be, but I still would say try it out because what you want to do is you want to have this long chain of evidence that you've done everything you could. And this is why you're calling eBay because, hey, I try to resolve this every which way. And that that will put more weight into your situation when it comes to the rep. The rep's going to say, hey, this person actually was trying to do everything and now they've called us and most likely their rep will try to help resolve that with you. You know, there's a lot out there that, you know, eBay's never on seller side. They always, you know, land with the buyer and so on. And and that may be true for some people, but I find in our experience that I would say over 90% of the time eBay has sided with us. Yeah. And the the seller really is in, in a big way, the customer for eBay, mm -hmm. because if you consider where Where they they, bring in the money, where where do they make the money? It's from the seller. So we are eBay's customer. They are, they're, they're working almost like a broker between the seller and the buyer. So the buyers are on their platform and they need to have a good reputation. The buyers need to be happy. But if, if you're eBay and you've got the choice between making a buyer happy as it were, who has, I don't know, a hundred, they purchased a hundred things on eBay versus making a seller happy who sold thousands of items on eBay. Well, you're going to want to try and make that seller happy. If you're you're holding those two customers in your hands, like, okay, which one is actually more valuable for our company? Um, Not to say that, you know, you're more valuable, but in in a way you're the one that's bringing the money to eBay. Um, So like, let's get specific because some of the things you probably should call about, because again, it's like, okay, well, well, when, when should I call? Well, we're very big on if it's negative feedback or a a defect that's going to hit your account that you really had no control over. So whether it was, you know, a shipping thing, uh, the post office lost something and the customer complained that it arrived late. And next thing you know, you've got a, uh, a ding on your account for that. Um, but you can prove that like, no, I shipped it on time. Here's the tracking information. Uh, that would be a reason to call because you don't want those defects. And also with the negative feedback, we've experienced anecdotally. And it seems to be a lot of evidence for it that once you start getting a couple of negative feedback, because I honestly don't think a, f- a, neg- a, a few negative comments or feedback on an account would be enough to make s- a significant number of buyers go, oh, I really want to buy no, this random pair of shoes. Oh, wait, they have this one negative feedback. I'm not buying from them. But the algorithm, as it were, is going to promote if, if you're selling a similar item as another store and the other store has a higher standing as far as eBay is concerned, they're going to promote them over you. And so 
we see dips in sales when we have a negative feedback hit our account. So definitely if you have a negative feedback and it's something that's really not your fault, hey, I shipped this out and the customer says it was item not as described because the shoe didn't fit them, right? eBay or eBay rep can correct that and they have for us in the past. So defects and, and negative feedback are two reasons why it would be a good idea if you are unable to resolve it with the customer to call eBay. No, agreed, agreed. And there could be a lot of others, you know, you're being harassed by a buyer or, or, you know, there's, there's something that just looks suspicious in the fact that they paid something a, a certain way and you don't want to ship it out. Like, again, it has to be something right that a rep can resolve. If you, if you're just calling just to complain, like you're not happy about the promoted listings or, or you heard that on social media that, there's a glitch and you know, that eBay is throttling items or like the rep, what, what can the rep do? The rep can't do anything about those, but can the rep do something about your feedback or your transaction defect or about a bad buyer or a bad return situation like that? Then yes, then it's definitely a call that you should make. Now, the last thing I want to discuss here is it has to be worth your time. You got to think about that. You know, if you're dealing of, of an item that was maybe $15 and it was returned to you it and broke and it's broken and you're going to spend an hour with eBay trying to get eBay to credit you that money, it's just not worth your time. No. Right. But if it's something that's several hundred dollars, then yeah, it's worth your time. But you got to measure that out. You know, if you don't like the fact that somebody complained that an item was shipped late, like, okay. Just roll with it right now. If it's a, like you said, if it's a bigger deal, right, where it's if you have a very expensive item and somebody's going to leave a, a negative feedback on that item, then I would probably, you know, try to resolve that. But it has to be worth your time. A lot of people I hear on YouTube are very quick, like they do whole videos about them calling eBay and their conversation with eBay. And I'm like, how long did that conversation go? Like my conversations with eBay at the most, at the most are 10 minutes. If that I try to be in and out yesterday, I called eBay uh, about a buyer who uh, claimed that, you know, and I, I mentioned this on our update episode, claimed that their place got, you know, their IP address got hacked and all this. And I called them and I said, hey, by the way, you guys refunded them. I wasn't aware when the item arrived. Uh, this was closed without resolution. I would like the transaction defect to be removed because of this scenario. And they're like, okay, literally was like a minute, right? So it was worth my time. Now, if I was going to be on the phone for 30 minutes to an hour over, you know, the fact that this person here, here's the thing. I could have argued that this individual uh, should not have been refunded the shipping because they did the accidental purchase because I, I, in the end, I'm going to, I'm, it's very possible that, you know, I lost money from the item being shipped back. And I could have made that argument. I could have said, well, they did return the sender, but, you know, I, I think I may get charged $4. I'd like to get that refunded. That could have been another 10, 15 minute conversation. Just not worth it. Just move on. Just move on. So hopefully this all helped you. Again, you want to call eBay when it matters because you want them to take you seriously and you want them to help you. But if you're always, you know, calling every single opportunity you can, I'm pretty sure they're going to say, oh, here goes this person again. Uh, I'm just going to refer. That actually happened to somebody on YouTube. I saw how somebody were, they were referred to some website and to read up on the website about how to handle things. And you don't, you don't want to end up in that scenario. So make sure you call eBay when it's the last resort. Make sure it's something that you try to resolve with the buyer first, and then you call eBay, something you can control and use other avenues like eBay seller help or eBay for business. And in the end, make sure it's worth your time. With that being said, make sure to be real, be relevant and be reselling plates. Peace. <laughs>